Braille is so important to me. It is just like a sighted person reading print. It's just amazing. When I was six and I what wondered and marveled how kids were learning to read in the second grade class and I was in first and at that time children were learning to read in first grade and not in kindergarten or preschool like they are today um, I just was amazed at how words worked and what was the whole process and from my beginnings of, of reading Braille the the alphabet books and going on into books and really really getting into it my whole education uh, was Braille and started not using audio, started using audio perhaps in, in high school, junior high and high school. And I'm just so privileged today to work with it, to read it still, to read it in a different way, and to teach it. Uh, I've taught children and I teach adults, and adults don't, you know, don't have to be so frightened that it's so difficult to learn. If people want to read elevator buttons or um, um, read playing cards, Fantastic, make a label for something uh, in the kitchen or, or anywhere, you know, like microwave uh, um, spices. It's one way to do it, and they don't have to be reading hundreds and hundreds of pages. One fantastic thing is this is a uh, cartridge, and this is called Waking from the Dream, the Struggle for Civil Rights. And then it, down, it gives the, the DB number, which is a digital book. This is a, an, uh, a talking book. Um, from the Library of Congress, National Library uh, Services, and people borrow these books from the library. You can see there's a USB there. You pop this into a machine, uh, uh, a talking book player, and it's great. And what's what's wonderful, we, we've always labeled, they've always labeled the records and cassettes, and now these are the cartridges. So I, I like to show my students how to read enough of this so that they can identify what they have. Um, this is an excellent machine. So often today we can use electronic braille and I'm on the subway, I'm on the train and I'm reading with this and people are always asking me what is this and how it works and what am I reading, what am I doing? And braille today, electronic braille is really the wave of the future of braille, the present and the future. Again, people don't need to be carrying huge cumbersome books around. Uh, the Bartlett's familiar quotations might be 100 volumes or encyclopedias, 100 volumes. The Bible is 18 huge volumes in Braille. And now um, we, can, we can have it right um, in refreshable Braille, electronic Braille. You can see right here, this is uh, the main menu. I'm on the desktop and this is just like a computer. This is a note taker, and it has the six keys of Braille, and an enter and a backspace space key, and keys over here to move the Braille around, and I'll just do some writing on here. It has a speech also, and um, Okay, so I've opened a practice document here, and you can see right there, there's nothing there, but that's my screen, just like a screen would be. That's the cursor, two dots there, and I can turn on the speech. I don't use speech usually, but if I'm teaching students, I will, so that they get the positive audio feedback along with uh, their Braille writing. So if they're writing the alphabet, Man, stop. Okay. oh, stop that, no, stop that noise. Um, let me just fix a speech here. Volume 25. Okay. Dog 3. Pitch 9. Pitch 10. Rate 6. Okay, much better. This is how I would. Main menu. So. Folder. Document. Okay, so I'm just going to write something now so that. If I were teaching a student, they would, again, be able to hear what they're doing. Something very, um, happy holidays. Capital sign. H. A. P. P. Y. Apostrophe. Happy. H. O. L. I. Dot five. Yes. Holidays. New life. Okay, there it is. Happy holidays. Now, that's great. And what's wonderful is a person 
who is perhaps learning Braille as an adult, uh, tracking is very, very important when you're reading a book. You have to go to the next line and follow carefully, and it can be overwhelming sometimes for adults to read a, a, a lot of information in what we call close braille, where all the lines are very close together. That's easy for me, but I've been doing this for a long time. So again, I can encourage an adult to read because they're reading on one single line of a braille display. So this has been one of the biggest changes is to have electronic braille. Now we even have today braille, uh, there's a braille tablet. Um, it's just like this, but it's newer. And there's a tablet so you can braille on the touch screen and you have your braille display. We can connect this to our iPhones or other smartphones. Um, we can even um, write braille. You can go and look at um, mBraille and Braille Touch. Those are great apps from, from Android and Apple. You can put that on your smart device and you can practice braille uh, and, and you can visually see what's going on. And so, so that's fantastic for people who have no idea how Braille works and who are daunted by it. The way to really work with now is electronics and Braille together. It, it embraces technology and, and we are working with the Braille dots, which we have loved for so long. Um, they have also, the, the Braille Authority of North America, BANA, has uh, worked with over 20 countries for over 20 years and we have now a global braille and a global English braille which is called unified English braille and that again is one I would say that is the second largest single change because now all of the English speaking world is using the same code and when we translate back on the computers things go more smoothly um, everybody doesn't have their own individual rules and it's it's making things much more professional and much more workable I when I can translate my work into Microsoft Word and it's a perfect translation uh, to me that's that's amazing so we keep working together with Braille and technology and uh, I will continue and I'm I'm so so excited and uh, and and very grateful